You guys have been requesting that I test for the 3400G instead of going with a typical review on a motherboard. Why don't I test it with the ASRock A300 Desk Mini? Now this is a unit that came in and I absolutely loved it for its form factor. I believe it really extracts the most potential out of an APU. Small form factor, the thing is literally like the size of my hand and you can get some decent performance out of it. If you guys haven't seen that review, I'll put the link up here for you. But today we're gonna to be updating the BIOS on this because you will need to update the BIOS for the 3400G in order to get it working and then testing that against the 2400G in this little tight unit here. Now I am limited to so dim memory, which is some real bottom of the barrel stuff. And I only managed to get this to 2666 megahertz at CL15 timings. Though at those timings, what is the difference between these two CPUs and how are they going to perform in games since the Ryzen 3400G now sports Zen Plus CPU cores, which of course are better than the 1000 series CPU cores, which they put in the Ryzen 2200G and 2400G. And then this generation with the Ryzen 3000 chips, typically on the 3600, you've got brand new Zen 2 uh, CPU cores, which are seven nanometer, but on the 3400G and on the 3200G, you have the Zen Plus 12 nanometer cores. And coupled that with the Vega 11 graphics on the 2400 and 3400G, you now have higher boost clocks. Though how much of a difference will that make in games? Let's test this thing out and see what the verdict is. So with the Desk Mini A300, if you guys wish to use a Ryzen 2400G or a 2200G or 3400G or 3200G inside this with the stock cooler, then you're going to actually need the Wraith Stealth due to the height and the mounting. The Wraith Spire, which comes included with the 3400G, won't fit, even though that weighs in at 450 grams roughly, and the Stealth weighs in at 300 grams, it will provide better cooling performance. But if you wanna save some money, and since the A300, itself, the bare bones only comes in at 150 bucks, it is a good option to save money and use something like the Wraith Stealth. Well, all you have to do is take off this plastic cover and then apply a bit of force and you'll be able to fit it inside, no dramas. Now, in terms of testing out the temperatures between both these CPUs, we had the 2400G running at roughly 86 watts from the wall in a stress test. These are at the same memory speeds and then we used for the 3400G, it was coming in at 97 watts from the wall. The hardware monitor readout was showing about 26 watts versus 30 watts, and the temperatures were coming in about 86 degrees on the 2400G versus 85 degrees on the 3400G. However, keep in mind, the noise on the Wraith Stealth did get a bit noisier for the 3400G. I'll let you guys take a quick listen. As for the 2400G, that was pretty whisper quiet. I'll let you guys have a listen to that quickly too. So now looking at CPU performance, for these tests, I just ran both these CPUs out of the box. And considering it's with the A300, we are limited by the cooler, we're also limited by the motherboard's VRM, and of course we are limited by the power supply included, which I believe is only just above 100 watts. So the fact that we're already using that wattage out of the wall on a stress test means that we don't really want to push this a whole lot more. But here's where the 3400G does pull ahead. It's uh, topping out around 3.9 gigahertz all cores out of the box versus around 3.6 gigahertz all cores on the 2400G. This enabled it to get a better Cinebench R20 score, 1862 points versus 1633. And then on the single core, we did get a better score of 401 versus 380. V-Ray on the CPU side didn't see much of a difference at all. We only shaved off nine seconds and then moving over to the other side, since this does use AVX2, so I'm guessing the difference there wouldn't be a whole lot once it puts out that heat. And as we said before, speaking of that overclocking, you wouldn't really wanna bother when you're already pretty much topping out the cooler and the motherboard and the power supply included. So V-Ray, the GPU side of things, saw pretty much the same score. And then moving over to Geekbench, we did see some higher numbers, actually significantly higher numbers on the multi-core score for the 3400G. And then on the single core, 
we got a boost there too. So if you're thinking about the 2400G versus the 3400G just for raw CPU performance out of the box, then the 3400G definitely has an advantage. Though what about gaming? And this is probably one of the most important things if you're getting this, you want to be like, hey, I want such a small form factor. And I also wouldn't mind playing some games at 1080p or even 720p and getting some decent FPS. So I decided to pull up three of the top five games played on Steam, first being GTA V. Now this actually couldn't handle it at 1080p on the lower settings, but dropping things down to 720p did see a boost for the 3400G, where it got 66 average FPS versus 58. And then the 1% lows were better, and also the 0.1% lows were better. So this was a clear victory for the 3400G in this title. Though turning things over to CSGO, we saw at 1080p lower settings on the workshop benchmark, we got both 110 FPS versus 111, and then eight and seven, 0.1 and 1% lows. So there was virtually no difference in CSGO, and then going over and playing some multiplayer because I saw the 1%, 0.1% lows were really bad in this benchmark, it wasn't such a big thing in Dust 2. We got 115 average FPS, 55, 1% lows, and the 0.1% lows were actually consistently low at 14. So the APU was struggling a little bit in CSGO to get a perfectly smooth experience. But going over to Dota 2, 1080p on the lower settings with 100% render scale, saw us get a pretty much exact same results, just like CSGO of 105 average FPS versus 105, and then the 1% and 0.1% lows were very similar too. And this game does pretty much get those similar 0.1% lows regardless of what GPU you're doing. Even on high-end systems, the 0.1% lows do go down to these levels, so it's nothing to worry about. But what we can see here is that the APU, depending on the title, 3400G can do a lot better. So now running all these tests with the 3400G leaves me at a clear cut recommendation. And that is, if you're going to get the APU on this part, I'd be getting it more so for the CPU performance out of the box than the 2400G. I think the extra money, if you're going to try and get that extra graphical performance, you'll then have to go spend more money on things like faster SODIMM memory, which unfortunately for SODIMM, the higher you go in speeds, the uh, difference between that and desktop DDR4 memory starts to blow up out of control. Just checking out some Kingston 2666 megahertz memory, it's coming in at $75 for 16 gigabytes, which is great value. But then if we start stepping it up to 2933, and then of course 3200, the price increase simply doesn't justify the performance gains that you're going to get on this memory. The one thing I will point out is that the 3400G in the A300 managed to get the memory up to 2866 megahertz at CL17, although it didn't make virtually no difference in the gaming performance versus 2666, which is what my uh, 2400G topped out on. So we do have a better integrated memory controller on the 3400G versus the 2400G. But in saying all that, the 3400G, it does have better CPU performance. It does have a higher boost clock in the Vega 11 graphics. So it will do a better job that's if you can extract the performance out of it. So I guess this would best suit someone who maybe wants to go with the B450 motherboard with BIOS flashback, and then use this as a bridging gap between them getting this and say a 3600 in the future, and maybe a dedicated graphics card. But in terms of coupling this with a A300, I'd actually prefer after doing today's test to either get a 2200G, which is only coming in at $80, or get a 2400G, which is coming in a bit cheaper, and then go out and get 16 gigabytes of so dim memory and just have happy days. Me personally, I feel like with the APUs, if AMD can release Zen 2 7 nanometer CPU cores and then the Navi GPU portion together, then you would have an absolute winning combo on your hands with the APUs. So I can't wait for that day, but who knows when that's coming. But in terms of doing my testing here today, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to go out and get a 3400G over a 2400G and spend more money on an A300 desk mini. And that's because the 2400G includes the Wraith Stealth versus the 3400G, which includes the Wraith Spire. And as we said in the intro, the A300 desk mini will fit the Wraith Stealth. So you're getting a bit of added value by going with the 2400G for this particular setup, coupled with limitations of sodium memory 
being more expensive for the speeds than the desktop counterparts. Though, if you're going to be using this uh, APU as a bridge gap between you getting a better CPU and dedicated GPU later on, then it does make sense to couple it with a B450 motherboard and use it as a stopgap measure until you can afford better hardware, or of course, if you're building a mini ITX rig and you can utilize some desktop DDR4 memory. But with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comment section below if there's any more tests you wanna see, or what do you think about the 2400G versus the 3400G. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.